Good evening, I'm Diana Jones. And I'm Beth Sheldon. This is a special edition of News 31, a look back at the year 1991, a very eventful year. It's over already. I know, too fast. It always is too fast. I guess that happens when you start getting older. That's right. Everything goes by quickly. We had a lot of ups and downs, a lot of emotions. Um, January came in quickly and hard with uh, the threat of war. That's right, and a threat that was carried through. That's and, right. Um, the troops all went to the Middle East and uh, troops from the Twin States, right. the uh, 744th out of Claremont and the 131st out of Springfield and uh, the tail end of year 1990 we caught right. them leaving and then the beginning of the year we spent mostly covering the, uh, there were sort of two sides to the war of course, the people who protested That's it right. and those who uh, rallied and um, in support of the troops, which is not to say that those people protesting didn't support the troops. That's they right. always made that very clear that they were supporting the troops, but they were against the war in the Middle East. They wanted the uh, economic sanctions right. to go on a little longer. Very loud voices on both sides. Uh, I remember mm -hmm. covering some protests along the Ledyard Bridge in right. Hanover. There weekly. was a group that was, uh, that was there weekly early in the morning. Very dedicated, right. There were uh, support rallies that went on. Covered one in Concord, New Hampshire. Three or four hundred people showed up. Patriotic songs, uh, speeches of support, a lot of family members with the yellow ribbons. Right. That was a, that was an image that's that's very right. rem uh, rem memorable. Yeah. Um, that was something that uh, sticks out in my mind that we covered in 1991. Right. And of course, in February, the uh, ground war started mm -hmm. up, and uh, the result of that, unfortunately, w uh, was the death of two local soldiers, Todd Rich right. of Charlestown and Wade Hector of West Lebanon. And uh, you covered that, as I recall. And uh, what was that like, Beth? People ask us all the time, uh, what are the fun stories to cover and what are the most difficult to cover? And uh, when you have to approach family members who have just lost a loved one, very difficult, the most di difficult thing to do. But the, the, the families of Todd Rich and Wade Hector were very uh, supportive and very easy to talk to. They both allowed us into our home, into their homes, mm -hmm. to talk about their, their loved ones. And I think it was something that was uh, soothing and therapeutic for them to talk with us mm -hmm. about the happy things right. that they remembered about their loved ones. Uh, um, this is going to be a tough holiday season for them, but they have happy memories to look back on, and that was th what they shared with us about their loved ones. Right. Uh, those are, you're right, those, those are hard stories to cover, mm -hmm. though. Very tough. Right. Well, the year uh, progressed on, That's and right. uh, the war ended. And then we weren't covering uh, support rallies or protest rallies anymore. We were covering the, uh, the troops coming home. And uh, those were quite uh, exciting. Very emotional. What a change of emotions from tears of sadness when the troops were leaving to tears of joy when they returned. Most of the troops returned, and that was that was the happy part. Right. Uh, the hugs and the kisses and the, the little children running into their mother's and father's arms as they were coming off the buses in Claremont right. and Springfield. Um, very happy time. Right, and this, uh, you know, from a, from a television point of view, it was the first time that that um, you could watch a war on television boy. like that, and boy, I, I, you know, everybody was really uh, glued to their sets in January and February, and then um, for all the homecomings too, it really captured it all. Some powerful mm -hmm. images of the, yeah. the missiles finding their ways into specific doorways. But, but the happy thing about all that was when the troops came home and the war was over in mm -hmm. what a short amount of time, a couple of months oh. from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah. And uh, switching gears now, in March, a big story that gained um, very widespread uh, media attention, of course, that was the Pam Smart murder case. That was quite a story. Books came out of it, a uh, CBS television movie came out of that, and right. a lot of sensationalism. But the thing to remember is the, the lives that were ruined, uh, four young teenagers in jail for a very long time, Pam Smart's in jail for the rest of her life. Her case is on appeal, though. Two families are, are, are ruined, uh, Pam Smart's family and her husband Greg's family. Uh, tough holiday time for them. Um, criminal justice system at work, though. Yeah, That's really, what happens. Really. And another big story, of course, the biggest one in Vermont, I, I would safely say. Um, unfortunately, this is, it was, a, still is, <laughs> a bicentennial mm -hmm. year, 1991. And um, it, it heightened the sadness of the uh, the sudden death of Governor Richard Snelling. Oh, boy. That just came out of nowhere and took us, everybody by surprise. And uh, what I found difficult about covering that uh, was the simple fact that when, when, when we received news like that, 
we don't have time to really react or even grieve. No. We have to get to the business of producing a newscast, and that was exactly. a sad day for everybody. And uh, there are very few stories that you can go to your drugstore, to your bank, to the grocery store that everybody is talking right. about. But that was one of them. Yeah. What happened uh, was was something everybody was saying. How right. did he die? Right. Why did this happen? What's going to happen now? Because we had a Democratic governor take over. Right. Governor now, Howard right. Dean. Right. Right, which uh, took a while to get used to saying Governor yes. Howard Dean, but it's starting to sink in, and um, uh, life does go on. And, uh, uh, a very uh, a sign of how strong the human being can be, Mrs. Snelling, just days after the governor died, took part in a big bicentennial celebration. We were talking oh, about the right. state's bicentennial on the Saturday, I believe, after right. he passed away, and uh, she showed a lot of courage and strength. And a lot of towns uh, celebrated the bicentennial right. in their own different ways this right. year, with little celebrations, bandstand concerts, right. and the end-to-end -end, uh, wagon train that went That's went right. the whole length of the state. And uh, now, of course, Barbara Snelling's running for uh, lieutenant governor. That's so. right. Um, Who would have known back then, but uh, we have hindsight now That's and right. uh, can look back on the air. That's right. Well, we're going to take a break right now and come back and talk about some of the issues that affected us all in 1991 and how we covered those, those issues in our reports. So stay with us. Hi, and we're back, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the issues that affected us this year, and of course, uh, crime is a major issue that affects us all. Increase in burglaries all around the That's Twin right. States. Um, we had a rash of them in Hartford, and uh, a couple of guys were breaking into a lot right, of different places a lot of, and um, causing a lot of havoc. Right, and sort of... Um, um, ongoing um, r burglary rings yes. that we covered a lot of those and I'm noticing that we're getting more and more faxes from the police departments almost exactly. you know daily with um, a break in a break in here a break in there a break in there uh, sign of the times who knows more um, violent crime too right tragic event uh, in, at Dartmouth exactly right. the, uh, what has come to be known as the double axe murders two uh, Ethiopian physics graduate students were murdered in uh, June, mm -hmm. earlier this summer, and I covered that from beginning to end. Um, tragic event. Uh, another one of those that you you don't think it can't happen in my town, quaint, charming community of Hanover, New Hampshire, but it did. There is a Ethiopian man, Haile Selassie Gurmai, who is uh, in jail up in Haverhill right now, awaiting trial, which will be sometime in 1992. Uh, we uh, spoke with uh, friends who knew the young women, and that was a tough thing to do. They had very fond memories of, of two young women that were going to be very successful right. young women in science. Uh, we covered the memorial service where they were remembered. That was tough. It'll be interesting to see how that case develops, mm -hmm. um, find the motive there and what, what, what all went on. That's the one question that, right. that's gone unanswered so far. Why, Why did this happen? Why? Right. And of course, the the um, economy. Hmm. How can we not talk about the economy? That's right. um, the uh, recession keeps getting uh, deeper and deeper and deeper. That's and right. uh, people earning less now than they were three or four years ago, right. which is something that you wouldn't think is happening. New Hampshire has been hit very hard by the recession. Uh, word that budget cuts. That's right. Budget cuts. Budget deficits. Medicaid money seemingly bailing New Hampshire out of its uh, multi-million dollar budget deficit. Right. So they, they uh, pulled a rabbit out of a hat with that one. They certainly did. And, um, of course, the big fear always in, in states when you start having budget cuts are, you know, you hope you don't cut the um, in the departments that, you know, for human services. Exactly. Um, health and human services that help people who really need it the most. Exactly. And, um, Many more people decisions. needing that type of help these That's right. days. Another big issue. Um, last year that was um, uh, came up with one particular story that I can think of, of course, is the abortion issue mm -hmm. and uh, the withdrawing of federal funds to clinics that provide abortion counseling. Planned Parenthood comes to mind. Uh, they did not like, uh, obviously, the, the decision at all. There was a big uh, decision that they had to make on their part. Were they going to stop the abortion counseling and continue to accept the federal money so that they could provide services? To, uh, to their patients, or were they going to stop accepting the federal money and continue 
to give women all the options when it when it came to family planning and that was a decision making process that went on for quite some time right and they decided that they were going to continue to give women all their options and not accept the right. the, the uh, federal money right and that's an issue of course that will not disappear uh, that's right no right my, no wrong right. just a lot of different different feelings about that issue that's right um, another big story, uh, not so much an issue story, but uh, just a story of 1991 was the completion um, and the move wow. from the old Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center from Hanover to Lebanon. And that, that uh, took years in the making, of sure course. Did. And uh, what did they call it? The Big M. That's right. Started in move. October. Countdowns in hallways of right. the old facility, 60 days left, 50 days left, and so on. The new uh, multi-million dollar facility, it's just huge, uh, but... Uh, I haven't been in it yet. It's, uh, it's homey and comfortable, mm -hmm. light colors and food courts and shopping centers and, you know, small shops that, that uh, don't make it look or feel like a hospital. Right. I, I'm sup they're probably uh, uh, people who might not like that. I'm sure that's sort of a, that's right. an issue with some people. But that was a it, big debate. Probably the way of the future for major medical centers, I would that's imagine. Right. And, State um, of the art, that's uh, right. biggest in, in New Hampshire, patients from all over the region uh, seek treatment at the new Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center in Lebanon. Uh, we've been over there a few times. Mm -hmm. We've gotten the grand tour and are just learning our way around the new place. Right. And, uh, very helpful and lots of great care being given over there. And it was also sort of interesting and, and fun actually to watch it go up. That's right. You drive around there and in stages you'd see the whole thing coming together and it was amazing how um, exactly it's huge it's quite a complex what else do we have to talk about the well, banking you know, shake-up the banking shake-up in, in New Hampshire right wow. big big uh, big story there and uh, I don't think it's over yet either and uh, of course it brought with it layoffs of some uh, bank right. employees and um, some branch closings that's right um, a lot of people worried about am um, I gonna be able to withdraw my money tomorrow right biggest shakeup, I, as I recall, was the, the merger or the closing of the five banks right. and, and merging of, of different banks right. into new banks. And yeah. A lot of people wondering, am I going to be able to take my money out tomorrow? But uh, depositors were insured up to a certain amount of money, and so right. that was not a concern. But like you said, a lot of people lost jobs. Uh, there was a bit of inconvenience with the, the, the turnover and the, the, new, the old system changing mm. into the new one. Right. And like you said, it's not over. There's right. a lot of banks in trouble and a lot of bailouts still to be done. Right. We'll watch that one. You know, 1991, too, with the war and everything, and uh, it was quite a, um, a year to feel patriotic, I would think. And also, with the world happenings, the, 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 the demise of communism, right. an amazing thing, something I certainly never thought I'd see in my lifetime. And that brings up the subject of a very... Uh, a rare opportunity, I would have to yes. say, that you had. That's right. Uh, tell us about that. Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the Soviet dissident uh, who has been living in Cavendish, Vermont, for several years now, he's a recluse and he likes his privacy and uh, he's not uh, in public very often. We received word that he was going to be attending the bicentennial celebration that Cavendish was putting on for the state of Vermont, which was uh, earlier this autumn. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we showed up, and there he was. As I recall, you weren't sure if he'd be there. It was quite sort That's of right. a, a, an adventurous type of, of story was. to cover. Will he be there? Will he speak? And, and uh, he was. Yeah. Uh, very few other media people were there, so it was a, a rare and unique and great opportunity for us to be there. He uh, did consent to an interview, so we talked with him briefly about about what at that time were the dramatic changes in the Soviet Union. Uh, some of the republics were declaring independence, and uh, communism was on its way out the door, right. as you mentioned. He was very obliging to talk with us, but only for a few minutes. I remember that, he, yes. Uh, he was kind enough to give us his time, but only for a couple of minutes, and then no more. Right. His uh, son did the interpreting for him. And then he was just a Cavendish, Vermont resident, right. standing on the curb watching the parade and watching the fire trucks and the high school bands go by. But it was an opportunity we, uh, we, were, we were great, greatly appreciative to have. We got a telephone call and we thank whoever it was that called us and, and let right. us know that he was going to be there. That's but right. that, that was a lot of fun. And speaking of patriotism, there was another fun story you did up in Newberry, Vermont. Oh, I say boy. fun because I sure. It, 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 it was serious with them, it um, was. but it was a good story. Tell us about that one. Well, some veterans called the called us one day, and they were concerned that uh, the 
town selectmen or, or whatever the, the board members up there are called, were moving the flagpole from one location of the green to another. Right. And they were concerned about that decision because uh, the flagpole was in, in the spot for a certain reason. It had been there for forever. Right. And the and new spot was sort of off to the side, not quite as visible. Exactly. Right. And uh, there was a bit of tug and war over that, uh, veterans versus the, uh, the town board, what was going to happen. And a happy end to that story. The flagpole is in its original spot, and I think everybody's happy about that decision. That's right. And another very patriotic story, I guess you could say, is the uh, remembering Pearl Harbor 50 years later. And That's you right. talked to some yes. um, veterans who survived. Oh. Barry Vermont resident, uh, wonderful old character, and I'm sure he wouldn't mind me calling him that because uh, he had a great sense of humor about it and uh, had some very emotional and uh, meaningful things to say about that day in 1941. He was in Pearl Harbor. He was on a uh, fleet repair ship that was attached to the USS Arizona, mm -hmm. which went down that, that fateful day. And that was, a, that was a fun experience, and we appreciate him being willing to talk with us about that day. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I guess we're going to take a break now, okay. and uh, Mark will join us um, with some sport news from 1991. It was a big year in sports as well, so stay with us. Welcome back to our special edition of News 31. Sports Director Mark Ashola, welcome. A Welcome. very busy and emotional 1991 year in sports. That's and right. First, let me say happy holidays to everyone watching and uh, to you. And Thank yours. you very much. Okay. You too. Thank you. We must talk first about Magic Johnson. Uh, on the national front, I guess sports-wise, uh, Magic Johnson was the biggest uh, national story of the year in, in many uh, people's opinion and, and certainly mine. I remember the day that the story broke in the newsroom because mm -hmm. you came up to me and I remember specifically you said, I don't feel well in my stomach. That's right. And I think that was really the feeling of a nation. And I must say about the Magic Johnson story, when you first pulled a piece of copy off the AP wire that said Magic Johnson is having a press conference at whatever time it was, and we speculated why, and the speculation was that he was going to retire. Was, right. Is that correct? Exactly. Well, they said that the Lakers had called a press conference uh, to discuss uh, something to do of a, a, a large magnitude. That's right. Then we got little snippets of information. It's about Magic Johnson. Right. It's about Magic Johnson's retirement that eventually uh, right. has the HIV virus. And we, we wondered, uh, before we knew it was HIV, we wondered what was it, he, he must be, he must be uh, sick in some other way, or right. he mu something must be going on with his family. It never entered our minds that it, that it was HIV. You know, it, it's a lot of uh, folks uh, throughout uh, the years uh, have, have passed away because of uh, what is obviously a dreaded disease. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you talk about Andy Warhol, the great uh, pop, uh, culturalist, and uh, some other people, Liberace, uh, Rock Hudson, all inflicted with the disease. But here comes a sports figure. Magic Johnson, and it seems like all of a sudden the world is turned upside down. And a lot of people, this is where kind of I, I get into the mix of things. Um, people think that sports is kind of a throwaway thing. It's, it's really not as important as everything else that goes on. And here's a major sports figure comes down with the HIV virus and just turns the nation upside That's down. Right. So, uh, Led every newscast that night, uh, not here in the U.S., in Europe, in Asia, in Australia, in South America, everywhere was Magic Johnson. Of course, there were some other big stories uh, sure. throughout the year, too, and I guess locally the biggest one was Buddy Tevens right. uh, going to Tulane University, leaving the Big Green after five seasons uh, with a 22-26 or I should say a 26-22 and 2 record if I've got my facts straight. Uh, kind of a, an interesting situation. Uh, they may have a new head coach by the time this show airs. Uh, more than likely will be one of the assistants, Brud uh, Bicknell or John Lyons. Uh, that's my guess anyway. But uh, it, it was really a tough decision for Buddy Tevens, I think, leaving Dartmouth, le leaving his alma mater. He led the team to an Ivy League championship as quarterback in 1978. But uh, what a great uh, job for him. What a great position uh, coaching in Division One. Going to play his home games in the Superdome, which wow. is uh, quite a big step from Memorial Field in Hanover. I and, I think, and I think the viewers would be interested to, uh, to hear briefly about your efforts to cover that story in contact with uh, Dartmouth and trying to be in contact with Buddy and his family. You were in contact with New Orleans Television to try to get their help and coordination with that event. That was a hectic 
what, 24, 48, 72 hours for you. Well, you kind of you kind of work your sources, as they say in the business. And the folks down at the time, Picayune, a newspaper in New Orleans, were very helpful in spreading information. But it was actually a television station down in New Orleans, WWL, I believe, which broke the story that said Buddy had accepted. And of course, within a matter of moments, Buddy was on an airplane right. heading to New Orleans uh, to finalize the deal. Other big stories That's locally yeah. too: uh, Hartford Hurricanes football team winning two straight uh, Vermont uh, football titles, and uh, just a whole host of things going on. The the two young individuals that went out to Minneapolis and the right. Special Olympic uh, Summer Games and won gold medals, uh, Robert Plant and Mike Mills. So uh, I know last year we did a show, as, as many people know, a, a, a local sports show kind of wrapping up the year, and we couldn't get it done in a, in a half an hour. We had to do an hour, and it's kind of hard for me to sit here and do it in five minutes. But uh, so much going on, and certainly looking forward to another eventful 1992. Cam Neely, we need to mention that. That's a big story. Well, that's right. We had the big Cam Neely golf tournament here. We raised uh, ten thousand dollars for the Make a Wish Foundation of Vermont, and uh, there are, there was already uh, another tournament scheduled for the eighth of June uh, over at the Queechy Club. We understand it's going to be on both courses. Bigger, better, uh, improved. So uh, if I can put in a little plug, uh, sign up now. And uh, you will continue to cover local sports in 1992? We will do the best we can with the resources we have. Okay, Marcus Shola, good 1991 year. Thanks so much. Thank you, and Merry Lots Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you to you and all of yours. Okay. And uh, we will have a final word right after this. Kerry joins us now to talk about the weather in 1991, which really is very much a part of our lives and uh, obviously an important part of the newscast every night. Well, they're very weather conscious in this area, and uh, so uh, we try to do the best job we can with the weather. And uh, What kind of year was 91, would you say? Warm. <laughs> a warm year? A warm year. Uh, uh, virtually every month was uh, above average, and um, we even hit uh, many days over 90, I think, for instance, in... Um, July, there were 18 days over 80, and we had a 94 degree reading in Hanover in, uh, in May. I mean, it was really uh, quite amazing as far as the warmth was concerned. And the other aspect was the precipitation. Mm. Which, which actually um, hurts some local farmers now regarding hay. Yes, it, it's interesting how that sort of right. makes, makes a, a delayed effect. The um, very dry weather in the beginning of the year lack of snowfall and then the lack of rainfall throughout most of the first six seven months of the year really did uh, cause some problems uh, by August um, Hurricane Bob and another storm kind of mm. helped the situation and some people were able to, to save their corn crop but mm. I remember traveling up north in, um, in the beginning of September over Labor Day weekend and it was just terrible to see that corn just withered on the, yeah. on the stalks. Talking about Bob, I happened to be on the Cape uh, about three days after Bob hit and it was really, really something what, what that storm did. Um, yeah, I guess it just uh, took all the leaves off the trees. I haven't been down. Not only that, but it turned them all brown because the salt um, uh, hit all the foliage. And yeah. uh, when you drove down, this was in um, early September, but it looked really like late fall yeah. and it was it was quite depressing actually but whole whole uh, docks were wiped away and uh, roofs were damaged and uh, it was quite a storm. Yeah. They also um, I guess the Cape a little bit less but uh, especially the coastline of Maine and uh, New Hampshire um, and Massachusetts Cape Ann particularly in parts of northern Cape Cod Provincetown got really hit by that storm in uh, November where you had that storm that just sat out there in the Atlantic Ocean and and just kept giving that easterly fetch of, air, of water and just kept building up the seas and building up the seas with some pretty strong winds. We're kind of inland here, so we're yeah. a little less affected by, by that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's for, been quite a year. Really, and for people who don't, who don't know the, the behind the scenes um, details, Bob, you need to know, is very, uh, you're very particular when it comes to um, 
prognosticating, and uh, you're good, and you're, you, 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 you really take great pride in being very accurate, and for the most part, you are. Like well, the it's, uh, most of the time. It, it helps people. It helps yeah. people by, uh, by knowing that uh, one snow is going to be only a moderate snow, because they get confusing reports. Mm -hmm. um, some people will, uh, you know, will just give sort of a broad brush, right. uh, you know, 10 to 20 inches. Well, there's a... There's a big difference even between 10 inches and 20 inches. You're right. Um, and there's a big difference between a moderate, you know, four to eight inch snowfall and when it's going to fall and whether it's going to change over to that That's right. lovely ice and things I like know. that. I know. I'm all Give me some. Hold on, hold on. Slow down, Diane. I'll get it to you. And you work very hard yeah. trying to uh, predict what it'll be. So. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's tough, but uh, we, yeah. we all try to, to get it out right. Any final thoughts? Um, well, I certainly hope that the ski areas have a lot of snow, or at least can make a lot of snow this year. I hope that we have a, a very dry summer, uh, so that for, with, with timely rains for the farmers, yes. so that we can all enjoy our vacations. And I hope we have a gorgeous fall with beautiful foliage. How's that sound? Sounds absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. And we'll be right back. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you enjoyed this look back at the year 1991, an eventful year. Ups and downs, a lot of emotions. We hope 1992 is very happy and prosperous. Good night, everybody. Good night.